industrial we, system we, has inflicted the voices of the people this is happening to us. Yes. So we, uh, America, would never do a thing like this. Free to travel, to us. freed slaves and fugitive slaves played a vital role in building the Underground Railroad and organizing for abolition. And as slaves began to tell their stories, some wrote private and in some cases public letters to their former owners, de defying their attempt to return them to slavery. Here is one such letter from Jermaine Wesley Logan, who was pivotal to the Underground Railroad in Syracuse. Mrs. Sarah Lowe, yours of the 20th of February is duly received and I do thank you. It is a long time since I heard from my poor old mother and I'm glad to know that she is yet alive. I wish you had said more about her. You sold my brother and sister, Abe and Anne, and 12 acres of land, you say, because I ran away. Now, you have the unutterable meanness to ask me to return and be your miserable chattel, or in lieu thereof, send you $1,000 to enable you to redeem my land, but not to redeem my poor brother and sister. If I were to send you money, it would be to get my brother and sister, and not that you should get land. I am indignant beyond the power of words to express that you should be so sunken and cruel as to tear the hearts I love so much all in pieces. Be it known to you that I value my freedom, to say nothing of my mother, brothers, and sisters, more than your whole body, more indeed than my own life, more than all the lives of all the slaveholders and tyrants under heaven. You say you have offers to buy me and that you shall sell me if I do not send you a thousand dollars. And in the same breath, and almost in the same sentence, you say, you know we raised you as we did our own children. <laughs> Woman. <laughs> <laughs> did you raise your own children for the market? Did you raise them for the whipping post? Did you raise them to be driven off, bound in chains? Or where are my poor bleeding brothers and sisters? Can you tell? Who was it that sent them into, off into the sugar and cotton fields to be kicked and cuffed and whipped and to groan and die? And where no kin can hear their groans or attend and sympathize on their dying bed or follow in their funeral? You wretched woman. Do you say you did not do it so? Then I reply, your husband. And the very letter you sent me shows that your heart approves it. Shame on you. You say I am a thief because I took the old mare along with me. <laughs> Have you got to learn that I had a better right to the old mare than Master Logue had to me? Is it a greater sin for me to steal his horse than it was for him to rob me from my mother's cradle and steal me? Have you got to learn that human rights are mutual and reciprocal? And if you take my liberty and life, you forfeit your own liberty and life. Before God in high heaven, is there a law that one man for one man, which is not for a law, which is not a law for every other man? Did you think to terrify me by presenting the alternative to give my money to you? or give my body to slavery, then let me say to you that I meet the proposition with unutterable scorn and contempt. The proposition is an outrage and an insult. I will not budge one hair's breadth. I will not breathe a shorter breath, even to save me from your persecutions. I stand among a free people who sympathize with my rights and the rights of mankind. And if your emissaries come here to re-enslave me and somehow escape the unshrinking vigor of my own right arm, I trust my strong and brave friends will be my rescuers and avengers. 